Okay, let's go to fundamental uh, of delegation module five. Okay, now we're going to delegate no, the job. This is one of the responsibility of the supervisor. One of the competency also. You should be able to do, you know, should know the art of delegation. You know how to delegate. To allow supervisors to spend their time and energy where their contributions are most valuable. Okay? To, so, that is why you delegate. Why delegate? To allow supervisors to spend their time and energy where their contributions are most valuable. Like what? Like doing some planning, like doing, maybe attending some meetings. That's why you're delegating the work. Because you are other things that you have to do. That is why you delegate. So to distribute work among team members so it can be accomplished more efficiently. That's why in the job description, this is the responsibility. Responsibility number one, number two, number three, number four. Then you delegate. This is for you, number one, number two, number three, number four. That is why you delegate. You distribute evenly, uh, equally. Uh, you have to have a fair treatment, uh, equity to distribute work among team members so it can be accomplished more efficiently. More efficiently rather than you yourself doing it. Oh, that's why you need people under you. That's why you have a, an organizational structure. You, know, you analyze the job and these are the jobs that needs to be done by some guys. That's why you hire, you recruit and hire some people. Okay. To increase the commitment of team members to the organization. There will be more commitment and they will be motivated and they will be happy doing it. They will be motivated doing it. Okay. They will be excited in doing it because you make them, uh, you know, participate. They already have participation. Everybody are happy doing it. Because why? What are their interests? Their interest is to learn, to improve their learning curve. That is their interest. To learn more, to gain more experience. That is their interest. Uh, to satisfy their excitement. That is their interest. That's why they want to contribute. And why delegate? To develop team members. You have to develop them. If you're not delegating, they will not be developing. Okay? So why we don't delegate? This, the other one is positive. Why we delegate? This one is negative. Why we don't delegate? Why? What's the reason? I can do the task better myself. Oh, really? You can do the task better myself? Why? Because you are not, you have not done the training and development of your guys. That's why you're still the one who can do the task better. You have to train and develop your guys. Put them to make it better for you. Okay? You need somebody, you're not uh, alone. You're not alone in this world. You need somebody. It will take too much time to explain, explain what I want. Why? Why it's taking too much time to, to explain? Because you have not, again, trained and developed the person. I can do that as faster myself. Why? Again, you did not train and develop the person. That's why you're still the faster one. I don't want to burden my overwork stuff. Why? Why you overdone? Because there are more X and Y employees. Okay. There are less Y employees that who can learn, who can do the job. Therefore, they are overworked. You delegated to those few guys, but the majority guys are nothing are, not, are having nothing to, to do. Again, it's a, something to do with the training and development. So many things that can be solved by training and development, okay? I enjoy doing this task. Why do you enjoy doing this task? You should, you should not be a supervisor if you're doing, uh, you know, the staff work or the technician's work or the operator's work. You remain a operator or technician because you enjoy doing it. You, it means you're not enjoying a supervisor, then you go back to, you know, to being a technician or operator. This task is so important, I can't trust anyone else to do it. You are, you are not having trust. Why? Because, again, you did not train those guys and develop those guys. That's why you don't trust them. If I can do the task myself, I have no right to ask anyone else to do it. 
Again, this matter of matter of uh, trusting somebody. Yeah. So this is the reason why we don't delegate. So if you address all these things, then you'll be able to delegate and you'll be happy delegating some of your routine tasks to somebody. Now we'll be talking about trust and delegation. For each task to be delegated, consider your trust of the team members. You have to ask two factors. Motivation, do they want to do the task? And then the skill level, are they fully capable of doing the task? Those are the things that you're going to put in mind. So these are the, the this is the matrix that I want you to, to also to apply in doing your delegation. So here above here is trust skills, yes or no. Trust, you, do you trust motivation? Yes or no. Trust, you trust him or her? Yes. You trust his skills? Yes. You trust his or her motivation? Yes. So fully delegate. Fully delegate. Now the question is, no. In terms of, you don't trust his skills? No. Trust motivation? Yes. Develop. Already motivated to do the job? Yes. But the problem is skill, lacking the skills. So you have to develop in terms of the skills. Develop the person. Put him in OGT on the job training and development. Now it comes to trust, yes. Oh, I trust him very much. I know he can do the job. But the problem is his motivation, no. You have to manage the motivation. You already have the trust in skills. He can do the job. But the problem is motivation. You manage, manage it. Uh, give encouragement. Pip talks, one-on-one -on -one talks, etc. Feedback. Now, when it comes to trust skills, no. And trust motivation, no. Then redeploy. You redeploy. Maybe you reassign to other not so complex activity. Maybe the problem is the, the complexity of the job. That's why he has no self-confidence, no motivation, and then therefore no skills. So redeploy. Or fully train the person before reassigning again, okay? So try to utilize this uh, matrix. If you have a problem in terms of trust delegation, uh, trust skills and trust motivation, okay? Okay. So these are the four approaches I have discussed already. Fully delegate, give full responsibility for completing the task the team member. Uh, already 4.39. Develop, work with the team member to complete the task or assign additional development resources. Manage, monitor progress closely to ensure schedules are met. Redeploy, find another task to develop, to delegate to this person. So the handoff, what is the handoff? Turnover, it's like turnover. Provide the big picture. Why is the task important? Okay, this is why we're doing it. Uh, why we're uh, doing this activity. This is the requirement, this is the goal. These are the things that we're going to do. So you provide all the, the big picture. Give a clear definition of the de deliverable or the desired results of completing the task. Provide schedule or deadline expectation. Oh, we should be completing it in one month's time. Very Verify adequate skill and resource availability. Verify if the skills can do it. If he has training and development, his, he has competency. He is competent person as far as that uh, specific activity is concerned. And resource ability. There are materials, are there machines, are there tools that he can use? Are there machinery? No. Try to see if there are resources. Agree on follow-up steps if any are needed. Needed. Okay, we we come back one 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 week after. Uh, let's see what's the progress of the plan. Okay, give direction regarding what is needed and when not. How to do things. So effective delegation is consider commitment and development concerns. Consider motivation and skill level. Ensure a good handoff or turnover. Never delegate responsibility without authority because this can lead to disempowerment. 